Hello there, welcome back, and welcome to part 49 in our build log series of the Trumpeter 1-200 scale model of the Titanic. Today I am working on the base of funnel number 4. So I'll be doing as much as I can on this, similar principle to the room behind, um, getting photo etched doors and windows etc on, getting deck lighting done, having another debate probably about the internal lighting and whether we need to bother with that or not. So we'll see how far we get today. Without any further ado, let's crack on. So I'm now going to work on this piece. This is the base of the fourth funnel. Uh, and as you can see, I've already removed the uh, surface plastic detail on the top, but there's stuff to go on the sides. So there's the doors to get rid of, there's the deck lights, and the same on the other side. So we'll get rid of those. Uh, and then what I'll do is I'll drill out the deck lamps. Uh, and then we'll go from there. So for trimming off detail like this, uh, I tend to start with a blade uh, and then move on to a needle file. This this seems to be one of those jobs that really highlights when, um, when your craft knife blade needs to be changed because it does need to be really sharp. Otherwise you just won't be able to cut the stuff off cleanly. And here once again I am drilling out the deck lights. Uh, using one millimetre drill bit here which would scale up to these being uh, 200 millimetres on the actual ship. Um, that seems to give a fairly good scale. Um, the issue is, uh, any larger, and you'd end up with light pouring onto the deck, which really isn't what I want. So, as a complete aside to today's video, I've also been looking at funnel colours. Um, and this is a funnel which I've sprayed with this paint, uh, TS77. It's a Tamiya colour, uh, also known as Flat Flesh. So what do I think about this colour for the funnel? Um, if I'm honest, it's not for me. Um, it's a wee bit too peachy. Uh, it looks like there's almost a little bit too much pink in there for me. Um, now, the colour that was used on funnels in the White Star line was called White Star Buff. Uh, and accurately saying what colour that was is the million dollar question, because no one really knows. There's not really any colour photos from the time. Um, and quality control and such at the time means that we we really can't know for sure what we were um, what the actual colours were. But for me, this just looks a little bit too peachy. It looks a little bit too uh, pinkish. Um, I'm looking for more of a sort of almost like a sort of brasso kind of colour. So a little bit more yellowy. Um, so I'm gonna purchase a few different pots of enamel paint and see if I can get close with something like that. Um, however, I suspect the likelihood is I will probably have to mix my own. Um, if I do that, I will let you know what I've mixed. Um, but this is very much a uh, personal preference, really, here. Nobody knows for sure what the colour was, so um, it really does come down to the, um, the modeler's choice at the end of the day. So as you can see, I've already drilled out the deck lighting. Um, but what I want to do is I'm going to try to drill out on the inside as well to make a sort of aperture uh, for the deck light LED to actually sit in. Um, and the rationale for this is quite simple, really. Firstly, it makes it much easier for me to align the LED with the hole. Uh, so when I plonk it in place, you know, I can just plop it into the hole and it'll align quite nicely. And it also just sort of protects the LED a wee bit, you know, it just sort of shields it from any sort of harm. Of course, once this is glued down, it, it won't matter. But until it is, these LEDs are really quite vulnerable here. So it's worth doing what you can to look after them. So off we go. Um, and there's no real particular science to this. All I'm doing is using a uh, an oversized drill. Uh, this is probably, from memory, I think it was 2.5mm. Um, so wider than that of the LED themselves. And I'm, I'm just drilling about halfway through the structure um, of the plastic. And all that's doing is it's giving me a recess uh, into which I can mount the LED later. And I can glue it in place. It keeps it keeps it housed nicely, stops it from getting any harm. But it also makes sure that the LED is orientated out of the hole. So here I'm just cutting out some of the doors. Um, these uh, There's various different doors on this part. There are some without windows. There are some with sort of grated windows. Uh, so I'm just affixing them in the right place. Uh, normal method, cut out the door, fold them in half, glue them together, uh, and then stick them down 
onto the sheet, onto the part um, with Flexier. Now, some of the eagle-eyed of you might have spotted that in the last video I didn't put the wooden decking on the sort of windshields that cover the uh, exit doors to the second class staircase. Um, now that isn't an oversight, it's just that uh, scale decks doesn't seem to come with any pre-cut wood to do that. So what it does come with though is loads of spare offcuts and bits that you can use. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to cut out with some scissors some of this scrap and stick it down and that will suffice. Right, so there we are. I have chopped those out now. Uh, they're not stuck down as yet, um, but they're pretty easy to do really. All they are are a quarter circle, so really all you need to get a perfect shape is this length here, this length there, and then it's very easy to work out how to cut that segment. So quite simple, um, but it does make a big improvement. Um, it's sort of, because you sort of see this from on high a lot of the time, it does change your perception of this part of the ship quite a lot, actually, because instead of having two white quarter circles, you now have two planks of quarter circles. So it does make a big difference. Now, normally, as you know, my preference is to use uh, Gorilla Glue, wood glue, um, on the scale deck parts, um, just because it seems like a better option. However, for these sections, um, because, because they are so small, uh, I'd be a bit concerned about there not being enough surface area uh, to provide a good bond. So I'm actually going to use proper full-on super glue here. And that will provide a bond that I am very confident will last a long time. So similar principle to the wood glue really i'm spreading out the glue making sure it goes into all of the corners because with anything long and flat like a piece of wood um, if the glue does fail it will start at one of the corners and then the part will lift up from there so you want to make sure that the corners in particular have a good amount of glue uh, and it's as simple as that that's it done Right, so we've got the white paint on this now. You can see across all areas, lovely and white. But the top bit needs to be in a grey. And in fact, from what I can tell, there are two tones of grey on this. There's a sort of deep grey on the side, the, the forward side, which has quite a lot of fan equipment and stuff. Uh, and then there's a slightly lighter grey at the back, which is an area which I believe is sort of covered in canvas uh, and then uh, painted. So. Um, what I'm going to do is I'm going to mask up the sides and we're going to do a coat of the darker grey across everything uh, and then we'll mask up this portion and do the lighter grey at the back. Now undeniably I am normally fairly stingy when it comes to using masking tape uh, but on these parts where you really do need to have fine lines and stuff I do tend to use the better quality masking tape that people like Tamiya can produce. Now, as this video clearly shows, I am not an expert in um, airbrushing at all. Um, but the principle that I'm using is very much the same with any type of painting. You know, lots of mul multiple fine layers are much better than one big layer. This is a really, this is a dark colour paint. Um, and it's this is about the fourth layer in and I'm still not entirely covering the white. So I am using a lot of very, very fine layers. So that's the dark grey done and I've now masked up onto the, um, all the areas that I want to shield from getting light grey and we'll just go over and get this area painted up again. So this is what we've ended up with, uh, a darker section at the front and of course this area is going to be covered by the funnel and then a slightly lighter section at the back. You see we've got a nice line thanks to the good quality masking tape. Um, the reason I've done this is because I'm sort of going off a, um, a rendering which I will pop on the screen um, but these are a set of renderings that are really really good and um, I've used them masses throughout my build um, and I do I do tend to trust the research that's gone into them um, 
So I'm just trying to sort of recreate that. And it's, you know, it, as with many things, it just adds that little bit more sort of detail and interest. So these renderings are produced by a man called Vasilye Ristovich, and um, he has a wonderful Facebook page with all of these things on, uh, and I'll pop a link in the description to that below. But I do urge that you go and look at it, because the renderings are absolutely phenomenally good quality. Um, and the research that's gone into them is fantastic. Um, they really do paint a very, very realistic image uh, of the ship. Uh, so, I mean, I've used these hundreds of times over the course of my build. Um, and, you know, they're a fantastic resource, so do please go and check them out. So another bit of detail that I'm adding. Um, most doors on Titanic uh, had sort of brass plates on uh, where the... Uh, the um, door handle was um, and so I want to add those as well because again it just adds that little bit more detail it just sort of makes the doors pop out a bit more makes their makes make sort of catches the eye of the detail perhaps um, and I've been racking my brains how to do it for a while and um, I've been thinking about painting but it's painstakingly small bits to do with a paintbrush you know we're talking fractions of millimeters um, and then I thought about these these are paint pens, and I, I we use them an awful lot at work for, you know, doing witness marks on bolts when we've taught them up and that sort of thing. Um, but essentially, it is, as the name would suggest, a pen which has paint in it. Uh, and so I'll demonstrate on a piece of masking tape, but it's pretty simple. It's just a pen with paint. Simple. And what this allows you to do is it allows you to be very, very neat with paint. So we get the same permanency that paint gives us, but it allows us to be a wee bit neater. So I'm just going to go along and do these as best I can. See, so there's two done. three and I'll just do the ones on the other side as well I'm actually going to do it the other way around There we are. So you see now that the doors just have that little bit more detail on them. It's nothing particularly special, um, but it's a good tool, this, and it does just make it a bit of an easier job. So when I've got spare moments, I'm going to periodically go over the model with this paint, paint pen and just, you know, do each door in turn. Now, I need to put some glass in these windows because they're just a wee bit too thick. Uh, the plastic moulding is just a bit too thick without them. Um, and who knew that these windows were frosted? Uh, according to the Model Maker's Guide, these windows were frosted. Uh, and here's one I made earlier. You can see that what I've done is I've just put a pane of glass in that window and it's flush up against the side. Uh, and the frosting just sort of removes the need to do anything behind. Um, but it also gets rid of that rather unpleasant thickness in the plastic. Um, so what I've done to get this frosted window is, as I've done with frosting on other windows, I've simply got a piece of Perspex sheet um, and sanded that with wet and dry, 800 grit wet and dry. Um, and it just sort of takes the sheen off it, really, and makes it, as you can see, just a bit cloudy, really. Um, and then cut it to the right shape and glue it in place. Quite easy, but equally quite painstaking. It takes an awful long time to get an accurately sized sheet of perspex, but it will look quite good once it's done. So I'll get on and do the remaining nine windows. Then we'll be on to other photo etch stuff. So you can see I've got one side of the frosted windows done now, and now we need to move on to the other side. So another five to go. So what I've done is I've got a strip of plastic already cut out and already cut to the right width. So if you look, when I pop that in a window, it fits quite nicely. So the process I'm doing is I'm just fitting it in the window, 
getting the knife and just making a mark on the plastic where it needs to be cut. Then I can use my knife on the board, pick up on that mark again and cut. And I've got a window that's pretty much the right size. Uh, then if I actually fit that, this one is actually still a shade too big. Let's just work it back down. And there we are actually, that's pretty much perfect. You see how that now fits almost perfectly. Now, because the window has some reflective quality, I want to make sure that it is actually flush against the plastic. So what I'm doing is I'm putting a flat object on the plastic and then using a small object, in this case a drill, just to push the window against it. And what that makes sure is that the plastic is flush against the outside. Then what I do, Get some glue. And just glue in place. Now, because these are frosted windows, I am less concerned about the neatness of glue than I otherwise would be. But that'll dry nicely and it gives us a good finish. So I'll do the rest of these on time lapse because you don't want to be watching we make more of these windows, it's pretty tedious. But that's the general process. Now, just to make sure that the vents on this fan stand out properly, I'm going to paint this area black. Uh, and what that does is it just guarantees that the, uh, the grating of this fan sort of stands out. Because what we don't want to do is put the photo etch on and then for it just to look plain white because that would be a bit disappointing really. Lovely. 
So we've now got the grating in place and you can see the painting black behind it really allows those grates to sort of pop, makes it much more obvious what the thing is, you know. So I'm just having a look at what I need to do re-lighting uh, in, in this portion of the ship. Um, and we can see that the, the aft three windows on either side are in a um, turbine engine casing area and indeed a sort of fan room. Um, and after that we've got deck store, another fan room, deck games and second class cloakroom. Uh, none of these areas, I suspect, would have been accessed during the hours of darkness. You know, why do you, why do you want a deck game at midnight? Um, equally, you know, I, I doubt anyone would be in the second class cloakroom. Um, and I suspect this area here also wouldn't be particularly well used during the hours of darkness. But these forward two windows on the starboard side and this forward window on the port, um, these are in an area where there's a spiral staircase going down, uh, down presumably, I guess, towards um, the engine room and also towards galleys and such like that beneath. Um, so these aren't passenger facing areas, so I doubt the light would be particularly good quality. I don't think there'll be loads and loads of bulbs pumping out light. Um, so I imagine the light would be relatively low quality here. But these are crew facing areas. Um, and I suspect if it's a crew facing area with a staircase, I suspect lights will be on there pretty much the whole time. Um, because, you know, un unlike in the last episode when we were looking at the, um, the machinery room for the, um, the lift motor, um, that's a room that you only really turn the light on when you go into it. In this area, you might expect thoroughfare at all points during the day and night. You know, you've got re fairly regular shift changes, crew coming in, coming out. So I suspect lights would have been on here a reasonable amount of the time. So what I think I'm going to do is I'm going to light these three windows, albeit quite dull, uh, and keep these three windows dark. So, just going to do one example for you um, to sort of ex try to explain what I mean by um, 
having drilled those sort of secondary holes into the plastic. So you can see I've already got three LEDs in and I'm just putting a daub of glue into that hole. Uh, I get my LED uh, and because these are sort of sequential I'm trying to make sure that the wires are on the right side so the red wire pointing towards the previous LEDs black wire and so on. Uh, now most of this is about getting it orientated correctly. So what I'm doing, just putting that down like that. Getting a squirt of CA accelerator. Now, I don't know if you can quite see that, but hopefully you can. Um, the lens of the LED is now inside the plastic structure. You can see on that one is a good example. You see that the um, the circuit board of the LED rests on the plastic and it means that the lens of the LED, which for reference is this yellow part there that sticks out beyond the circuit board, that sits inside the hole. And it means that the LED is pointing straight out. So the light will shine directly out of that hole. And that's exactly what we want. Um, and as I say, it sort of protects the sensitive part of the LED a wee bit more. So it's a damn fiddly process, as I'm sure you can see, uh, but it is worthwhile because it does mean that your LEDs sort of make a bit more sense. You know, it doesn't really make sense if you have a deck light pointing upwards, the deck lights are there to light the decks. So um, it makes a lot more sense if you do it that way. This kind of job I do find a proper accelerator is really quite useful. So uh, I'm not going to cover too much of the circuitry because I am going to do a video on lighting in its own right. But essentially you can see same principle as before, LEDs just daisy chained along four in a row. So this red wire at the start of the chain will have a resistor on the end and this black one at the other end of the chain will go back down into zero volts. So to give the appearance of these aft three windows uh, not having any light in them, all I've done is I've put some black polystyrene uh, behind them and glued it in place. Now, one thing to bear in mind here is that I don't want to give the impression that these windows have literally been covered over, that maybe, you know, a blind's been pulled or something. I just want to give the impression that the room that these windows look out from doesn't have any light in it. So to achieve that, um, I've not really done anything special, but note that the black plastic sits on the actual inside of the window frame so you can see there you've got almost a millimeter of plastic between the actual glass and the black screen and all that does is it just gives a little bit more depth into the room you can just sort of see that there's a bit of frame behind the window so it gives the impression that there is actually a room there it's just that it's in in darkness so you can't see any more now if you remember earlier on i was saying i want to make these windows have some illumination but to be very very dim uh, and the way I've thought to do this is um, well it's quite simple really if you've counted you'll notice that there are seven deck lights on this piece so there's three on each side one two three four five six and then there's one right at the aft and that's seven now remember though in these LED strings that I'm doing I use four LEDs and a resistor and I can't do any less than that because otherwise the LEDs would share a greater amount of the voltage uh, and they'd burn out very quickly and it would just be a disaster. So I have to use two strings of four. So the way I've done that is I've got one string here, so that's, this is the first, second, third and fourth LED, and then I've got another string over here and that is the first, then there's one in the middle that's the second, and there's the third and the fourth. And this is how I am planning on making these windows have a rather dim illumination. I've put the fourth LED in the middle. You can see it there. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to box these windows in. So that's why I've got these two pieces of, plas of black plastic there. Uh, what I'm going to do is I'm going to put another piece of plastic over the top like so and box it in and that stops any light from elsewhere in the model shining through these windows. So the only light that will illuminate these four windows here is this one LED, 
which should hopefully give a relatively sort of poorly lit appearance. So just to give a bit of a test before we go any further, this is how it looks. We can see that our deck lights are absolutely fine. Uh, just to test it, I've just wired a spare connector in. So um, that will be desoldered in due course, but you can see that that still works. And you can see that we have fairly dim lighting behind those lights as I wanted and no lights behind the last three. On the other side, there is a little bit of an issue in that the middle light is slightly on. Sorry, the middle window is slightly illuminated and that's just because the LED above it is sort of shining through. Uh, so I'll have a look and see what I can do about that. Uh, but otherwise, quite happy with this. It looks quite nice, I think. And so here we are in, stuck down. A few issues with the light bleed as always. They need to be dealt with. Maybe some foil underneath the plastic maybe some black paint, paint, but otherwise quite good really. I like the effect of the sort of poorly illuminated windows forward. Uh, the central window in the aft is still a bit of an issue, but I'm not entirely sure what I can do about that, so I'll rack my brains in the intervening time. Got a little bit of light bleed from underneath, so um, I'll need to use some uh, light stopping stuff there as well. So a couple of things to do, but ultimately, so far so good, at least it's working. So there we are, light bleed issues largely rectified. Still a few issues on the top, but um, there's a lot of machinery around here, so that one particularly might get hidden. Uh, and equally, there's a lot of gubbins for the funnels around here, so I'm hoping they might disappear. Um, but if not, we'll, um, we'll find a workaround for them in due course. Uh, light bleed issues from the sides have also been fixed, and there's also some light bleed issues on the lower portion, this bit here. Uh, and that's been fixed as well. I tend to use this stuff uh, to get rid of uh, light problems. Um, it's actually a fabric uh, colouring paint, uh, but essentially it is a really thick, black, viscous liquid that dries, uh, and it just soaks up light, and it's very good for filling cracks where light sort of slips through, you know. Uh, so, for example, I've used it here, and you can see that actually I need to tidy up a bit because there's a bit smeared on the walls, so I need to clear that up. It's a very good product, uh, and I was recommended it by a man called Viz, so thank you very much, Viz. It's really helpful, <laughs> really very useful. So um, we're pretty much there with this now. Uh, I like all the deck lighting. I like the sort of half-lit appearance here. It sort of comes along with the idea of a, a crew area that's always illuminated, but probably don't, don't illuminate it as much as you might a passenger-facing area. Um, I've still got a slight issue with the um, the second window in here where it's catching a bit too much of the light, but I'll wrap my brains and see what we can do about that. But overall, I'm very happy with this. Uh, it's another part of the deck housing done. Uh, it moves us one step closer. Um, so uh, this feels like an appropriate place to end the video. Uh, if you've got any questions, comments, whatever you, pop them down below and I'll do my absolute best to get back to you. Uh, if you've enjoyed this, do please like and subscribe. Uh, it helps an awful lot. And I will see you in the next one, which will be the 50th episode, and there'll be a giveaway, so keep your eyes peeled for that. But until then, bye for now.